Hey guys, uh, just a quick video. I just wanted to tell you that I plan on making a short series of videos on uh, this person. There is a lot to unpack and it hopefully will help us find out like what it is, is what is it that we are looking for when we are, um, you know, trying to be guarded about how we spend our money and who we decide to give our money to. And there are several flags that you should be looking out for. And I know that a lot of people have talked about them. So I'm going to get into an example of one. I may have to make multiple videos on this particular individual just because uh, there's so much that they've worked on and there's a it's kind of a rabbit hole. So please stick around and subscribe to the channel so you can get updates. I am working on something a little bit more in depth regarding this person and their involvement uh, with game development and more importantly activism as a form of um, let's say uh, storytelling so if you like this video please smash the like button and subscribe let us get into it so uh, have you heard of a series called Borderlands I mean um, Borderlands is uh, was a pretty prominent title and I played, I want to say, every Borderlands game. I played 1, 2, 3 sequel, and I played 3. And even though 3 should have been the best one, I felt that it was the weakest one. I know that pre-sequel wasn't, like, really big with people, but um, I enjoyed it for what it was. I thought the second Borderlands is probably peak Borderlands. I never played uh, any of the other ones. I think I have, like... The one Tina Wonderlands or whatever for free, but I never started it because Borderlands 3 just kind of turned me off. And there's also a spin off series, I think, called Tales from the Borderlands, which is sort of like a narrative driven game. Apparently, not very popular, did not really go over very well with people. The sales were pretty bad. Um, so, you might be wondering, like, what changed? And I know we talked a little bit about this, I know people have talked a little bit about this before but i think that it bears uh, mentioning to get in, into a specific individual that was involved with borderlands so this is lynn joyce and this is her website so uh all credit to lynn joyce shout out to lynn joyce for putting up this website that i am using as my reference to discuss her involvement in gaming um with this video she is um a writer and an editor and basically a boss in the game development space okay uh, she has worked with gearbox software she's still working there she was brought on board in 2020 you might like if you are a follower of borderlands or maybe you were into the borderlands scene at the time you might have noticed a shift in the content let's say coming out of gearbox and look gearbox had issues going before this I think if I'm if I'm not remembering incorrectly, I believe that Gearbox was the uh, same developing studio that dropped the ball on uh, Aliens, um, Colonial Marines, which is really shame because that is a franchise that really deserved to be amazing. Although we did get Fire Team, which isn't bad, and we have Hell Divers, which is basically the best iteration of that that you could ask for. But anyway, so what does she do? at the industry what does she do at gearbox is she a coder does she is she an artist well she creates stories writes and punches up scripts punches up scripts joins narrative stakeholder groups in the review and iteration of story content Ooh, that's interesting stakeholder so do you are you familiar with stakeholder capitalism this concept of stakeholder capitalism i know that a lot of people hear that and their brain would go right to oh that's when you own shares in a company and you get to essentially uh, own a part of the company and that affects your ability to impact the company like you can uh, you know have like a say about the direction of the company or whatever yeah that's not what this is Stakeholder capitalism is not shareholder capitalism. Shareholder capitalism is when people own shares in a company and they get to essentially have some effect on it. For example, there are many shareholders that own shares in Disney. The ones that own the most 
get on the board of directors. They get to make decisions for Disney Corporation. And as a result of that, they're interested in profits. So shareholders want to make money. So that means that they want to essentially um, get a good return on their investment. And that means that what they have to do is they have to be essentially on the side of the consumer. They have to be on the side of the people spending money. Stakeholders are not interested in that at all. Stakeholders believe that they don't even own property in the company. They have a stake in the company. That's why they're called stakeholders. It's like, you know, they're concerned about what the company is doing in terms of social justice, uh, impact on environment, on governance, on things like uh, redistribution, what, whatever their values are, representation, equity, right? Stakeholder groups are activist groups and stakeholder capitalism is a part of this global homogenous um, society that's being pushed through these massive multi like billion dollar corporations like BlackRock, although not exclusively them. And uh, it is very important for you to notice this because when they say stakeholder, they're trying to trick you. They're trying to make you think that they that it's just a, a buzzword corporate speak for someone who owns some property in the company and they get a say. People will get it conflated with, with shareholder all the time, but it's not. And I did a video on stakeholder capitalism. Look for it in this channel so you can see more about it. It's very important that we understand that because this is not about money. And that's like one of the most crucial things. Like Grums has finally started coming around uh, or at least saying that it's not about money per se. I mean, there's there's cheap money you can get, but it's not about money at the end of the day. It's about essentially having power over the culture through our media. That is what it's about. It's about activism, okay? So anyway, so she's part of a stakeholder groups. She focuses on plot development, writing dialogue for voiceover, in-game text for missions, flavor text, and writing for user interface. She collaborates with mission and level designers, art and sound design, cinematography, and more. So she is um, basically a narrative. Um, she does narrative changes. Okay. She was a teacher. This is also very important. She comes out of academia. Academia is where a lot of this intersectional communist doublespeak comes from. This, I mean, if you know, if you're looking around, you might have seen that there are a number of protests and uh, crazy sit-ins going on around in college campuses all over the country here in the United States. This is a, not an accident. These things are organized um, well before any anything happens. So these kids that are going, they're, they're going six figures in debt to learn how to be activists and they can't actually use their skills in the real world most of them unfortunately and so um this is the academia is where this rot started and it started in the 1960s so we are dealing with the consequences of that of about maybe two or three generations worth of people who have been through the education system and this has begins honestly in kindergarten so anyway She's a senior lecturer, University of, da of Texas at Dallas. She talks about uh, game studies. That sounds like gender studies. I'm sure it's very similar to that. If you have taken a game studies course in college, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, it's okay. Inst uh, instructor of digital content design. Again, it's, it's I've been to art school uh, for about eight years. I know how this works. Most art school also does not teach you about techniques. I learn techniques mostly on my own. What most art school will teach you is um, about how your art has to have a political meaning in order to be seen as relevant. It is what they promote. If you are a feminist, if you are a race, race advocate, if you're involved with critical race theory, if you're a socialist, then the arts are going to pander to you specifically because that is what they want to encourage. And this is what they are doing in the wider culture as well. She's an instructor of Introduction to Arts, Technology, and Emerging Communication. 
This is also important because this is how they propagandize us and this is why they want to control the game space. I mean, if you look around you, the film and television and music spaces have all been captured already. Video games and social media as like a broader sort of like general uh, conversation are basically what's left in terms of what hasn't been completely taken over by these people. But they are trying, okay? And you can see that she has like a pretty big um, experience in teaching. Now, there was something that I thought was very interesting in services that maybe you guys don't know about. So there is this thing called Digra. And I covered Digra years ago when I used to do um, a Gamergate show on Honey Badger Radio, which you can probably still find in our playlists going back to 2017, 2016. And this is what Digra is. So Digra 2018, Proceedings of the 2018 Digra International Conference. The game is the message. So the message is very old. I know people are starting to see it now and talk about it now and that's great, but this is not a new concept. Video games, learning, and the shifting educational landscape. Uh-oh, learning? So video games are changing our imagination of what constitutes as learning, what we should learn, and how we learn. In this paper, I describe the ways in which video games mediating our realities are reshaping parts of United States educational landscape. Specifically, I focus my review on three slices of this larger educational landscape, including the discourses on literacy learning, informal learning, and game-based pedagogies. Ooh, pedagogy is a, another very popular word with a lot of Marxists, um, Marxist professors. So all kinds of red flags just here, okay? Here, video game playing is seen and argued as a form of literacy learning where players are learning to encode and decode meaning through this medium for active cultural participation in both societies at large and the specific video game cultures. However, when these cultural practices are situated within a stratified and hegemonic society operating under neoliberal logics, it is unclear who are we serving with these interpretations of learning. And there's a lot more um, things like this. There is um, essentially a lot of, uh, yeah, here we go. So here's one that's sort of like about environment, uh, rural open world games as liminal spaces of the man nature dichotomy, um, character autonomy and automated avatar actions in digital games. My, is my avatar my avatar? So this is like intellectual commie gobbledygook disguised as disc discourse about games. And if you go to Digra, you'll notice what appears to be missing are things like about game mechanics for the purposes of them being fun or engaging, increasing replay value, increasing uh, player retention in terms of gameplay stuff. This is almost all apparently about narrative and about equity and representation. Uh, and subjective perception. So that's another one. Subjective morality, which is a big thing today. Even in games that people don't consider to be woke, it seems to be like a big issue. So um, I'm going to be doing more on this person, Lynn Royce. She is, or Lynn Joyce, sorry for the mispronunciation. She is not the problem. She is the symptom of a much broader problem, as I've always said. Shout out to Empty Soul Zero One who sent me a D a series of DMs going very deep into this. Um, the interest of this person, by the way, is not only because Borderlands plans on making more games and she will likely be involved, but there's also another franchise that is very popular with people that are really into these called Homeworld. So, and apparently there is a game coming out called Homeworld 3, and it has experienced multiple delays in release, and it was around the same time that Lynn Joyce joined the team, development team behind Homeworld, and it has to do with plot rewrites and all kinds of other changes. So, if you were really into Homeworld as a franchise, um, I'm sorry, bros, it's not looking good. 
I think that she's going to have an impact, and it's probably not going to be a good impact. But let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Uh, just so you know, I'm very close to 500 subs, and the Discord is about ready to launch. Uh, when it is, when I have reached my goal, I will make a video announcing the Discord. Um, the purpose of the Discord server, in case you are interested, is basically a place for all of us to get together and talk about games. Um, we can. There are going to be rooms like um, for talking about the hype train for games that are coming out that we're excited about. Uh, we can make recommendations for things and we can also warn people against stuff i'll, I'll have um places where we can discuss future content that i can make and i'll also do gaming on here with some of the subs so if you guys want to play games together uh, i don't obviously i don't own every game but i'm really into helldivers 2 right now i also have a uh, baldur's gate 3 armor core 6 I, i'm big into souls games i'm big into fighting games so whatever it is that interests you. Um, all right. So anyway, with all that said, uh, this is just a short video to give you guys a hint of what's going on. And just so you know, I'm still out there making content. I might be doing a stream later today, and I, hopefully I will see you all there. So if you guys like this video, please hit like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you, you think about the subject of this video. And please, please, please share this video because sharing is caring. Thank you so much for coming on today's uh, show, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Long live Vivian.